I just was Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania and well, it's not as bad as some critics wanna make you believe, neither it is like the most amazing MCU movie ever. It's an Ant-Man movie for sure and at that it kinda succeeds. The movie is pretty entertaining, like I remember when watching Multiverse of Madness, I've never felt bored. The movie is good or bad, that's a different thing. Similarly, this movie is also like that, from the beginning to the very end, I'm hooked into the screen and that's a good thing. Even though the movie has its flaws but still, it's overall a 7 out of 10 for me. The major problem of this movie is the 3 acts of this movie feels like 3 different movies. You have a movie about a father daughter relationship, you have a movie about a rebellion and you have a movie about a futuristic society. So yeah it's kind of a amalgamation but it's much better than Thor Love and Thunder and maybe better than Wakanda forever and is an okay start to face fight. So far I have been very kind to the movie cause most of the problem I had with the movie are a bit of a spoiler. So spoiler alert. The biggest problem of the movie is Kang himself cause Kang who apparently defeated multiple versions of Avengers is defeated way too easily by ants and that was like pretty lackluster and Ant-Man and Vast are somehow stronger than multiple versions of Avengers. Then we have the villain. If you remember the villain from the first movie, the yellow jacket guy. Now he is Modoc and his story arc. The movie is like he had killed a bunch of people but he is defeated by Cassie Lang who doesn't even know how to punch in the movie. And his arc ends where Cassie is like, don't be a dick anymore. The movie sets up Modoc to be a menacing villain but his actions shown on the screen are opposite. And listening to Cassie's words, he betrays Kang and stops being a dick. That's his whole arc. And the worst of all is Janet Van Dyne. She is like, she don't want to talk about anything related to Quantum Realm. She is scared and she want to keep her family out of the Quantum Realm. But at the end of Ant-Man, she was there willingly sending Scott in the Quantum Realm to receive quantum energy to fix something. But this movie, she is all against Quantum Realm. Marvel, they don't even watch their own movies. But anyway, I have to say the best part of this movie is Jonathan Majors as Kang. Today I'm going to talk about the post credit scene. The first post credit scene connects the show directly to Loki where we see Loki and Mobius going on a time hopping adventure to find different variants of Kang. And the second one is where the main thing happens, where we see a whole stadium like place full of Kang. There are three major variants of Kang who are discussing about the Kang from Ant-Man is dead and and something is coming so this sets up the Kang dynasty more than anything. So that's it for this video and hopefully you enjoyed it and if you did please hit the like button and subscribe.